All right, hey everyone, this is Andre with Wings Mobile Detailing Podcast, and this is actually going to be a uh, business podcast on automotive detailing. I'm here with uh, Philip Miranda from Miranda Auto Spa, uh, also located in Richmond, Virginia. That's what I love about also this the company because you know we get together with we don't see each other as competitors. Uh, we get together and we can really open our mind, different ideas. Uh, so stay tuned with uh, the presentation there, and we'll. We'll get back. Welcome to the Wings Mobile Detailing Business and Automotive Podcast. The only podcast that will guide you on how to start and grow six-figure companies. As our team expands from one business location to worldwide domination, you will get step-by-step insights from a millennial franchiser and franchise owner with your host, Andre Mezzalera. Does it? (laughs) Hey, Philip. How you doing, man? Doing good. Doing All good, right. Andre. Thank you for uh, having me on the podcast. <laughs> Not a problem, man. Thank you very much for coming. And I'm, I'm always glad to, you know, share ideas, uh, especially because you run a different style of business. Although it's the same industry, it's auto detailing as well. But the last time we worked together at your garage and we learned a lot of things too. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a blast. I really like uh, collaborating with other detailers and... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning uh, a lot of things in the business because things are always evolving and changing. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I find it helpful to talk to other guys and bounce ideas off of. So, yeah, thank you for joining me on that one, too. I'm, I'm actually currently, oh, I barely even started editing that one. There's oh, a lot of footage. Uh-huh. There's a lot of footage, yeah. but it's exciting. I might maybe make it into two parts, um, uh-huh. but some of that footage we're also going to put on uh, the how-to series. Yeah. Uh, for Car Guy Supplies and uh, do a kind of different, you know, uh, mm-hmm. coding series and, and new car prep series and, yeah. and all that stuff. So I've that, subscribed. that'll be exciting. I've subscribed to your t- YouTube awesome, channel. Man. So I'm Thank just you. like, I'm just waiting for it to come because yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. I wonder if you post it. I know how it is. A lot of work, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it's uh, There's a lot of footage there and I slowly edit it, you know, in the evening. So I have yeah. like an hour or two. What's the um, name of that your your YouTube channel is for again? Uh, it's just Miranda Detailing. Miranda yep. if you Detailing. Type in Miranda Detailing. You'll you'll find it there, and um, we have videos coming out each week. I did actually put out one today that's part of the How To series from Car Guy Supplies, and those are like the short little videos mm-hmm. that um, I do like a little review of a product and yeah. show you how to use it. Those are such so, great videos, man. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. No, they really they really are helpful because I watch them too. It's on the auto auto detailing. So in any car fanatic guys out there I mean, i'm sure it's gonna be super helpful definitely because they do yeah. help i mean they're uh th- th- there are a lot of detailing companies out there who they actually do uh you know they're all good you know they explain it but i like how you get to the point you're not like two hours of videos to explain one thing so we really get separated and it's fun to watch i mean it's Thank all you. the detailing right yeah oh yeah <laughs> man it's a blast i, I try yeah. to make them short so that they you know keep people's attention but also yeah you're right mm-hmm. like to the point yeah um you don't have to overthink it. I know a lot of detailers now are like, don't overthink stuff. There's mm-hmm. there's so much out there that it can kind yeah. of overwhelm you yeah. with products. And, and even with those videos, I'm highlighting a certain product that you could buy. Um, mm-hmm. But you can pretty much do it with any type of product in that in that series, like a wheel cleaner. Yeah, There's many different wheel cleaners, and they're all around the same. Some are more expensive, some are less expensive. Some are maybe a little better than others, mm-hmm. but I mean, it's all up to, you know, uh, what type of products do you use, what you like, what is available in your area, yeah. all that stuff. So I yeah. kind of keep it generic, like, you know, a quick detailer. I like this one, but you can use any one. Yeah. They all do pretty much the same thing. And especially nowadays, I think that uh, a lot of, for any business, like they, as you said, keep it generic, keep it simple. Yeah. And I think that what caught my attention in the video, and I'm sure it caught a lot of, uh, everybody's attention which is when you're filming it over there you're just you know showing the product on your hand you don't have all the fancy you know i have the fancy set up but nowadays you don't need all that the content is what actually matters for yeah. any business you're explaining something doing uh, when, when did you start by the way around doing that uh, uh the, detailing, the, the videos, the videos? Actually, yeah the videos i think it's going to be coming up around the two-year mark now mm-hmm. I gotta go back and check when my first video uh, was like the first official like yeah. type of video where I show before, during, and after. Yeah. And then I got brave enough to put my face in front of the camera because I had an issue mm-hmm. with that. Like uh-huh. I don't think yeah. I want to do that, but <laughs> but eventually you know you work up the nerve. 
and and it's weird to see yourself on camera and and uh-huh. and figure out how to edit it properly. It's, it's so funny. It's the same here. <laughs> same with the podcast for me. For mm-hmm. me to hear my voice, uh, I I just can't. Sometimes I have my uh, my in Virginia in Virginia Beach, another one of our location there, and we do a lot of podcasts together. But we just when we get to listen into our voice, we get other people's feedback. Some people say, oh, it's you know, it's missing some stuff here and there. They help us a lot, or mm. it looks, it sounds really good. And I'm like, what? You know, hearing my own voice, it's it's strange for some reason. It is. It is. <laughs> so it's even it's weirder true. when you see your face. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. your voice. And it's funny camera. how everybody thinks that. You know. Yeah. Everybody thinks, oh, you know, what they're doing is, uh, it sounds weird or whatever. It, it's funny hearing from you because yeah. I had the same perception. Yeah. Arsalan too. And, and, and I guess I guess to a point, you know, many of us do when when we first start out, and and. I still kind of do now, but I've learned there's certain uh, things that I say, like there's certain words that I that I notice myself saying also, uh-huh. and I'm like, I gotta stop saying that, or I need to stop saying this. I sound goofy, or I, I, it sounds yeah. redundant. But that that helps you improve too, yeah. and I think it actually helps you uh, learn how to, I don't know, speak in a way that, that also customers could, can understand because in the videos you want to be concise and to the point. Yes. You don't want to just ramble on. Yeah. Some of my videos I think may have, I may have just rambled on and I look back and I'm like, I could have just said that in like two <laughs> sentences. Same with me. It's so funny yeah, how that works. Yeah, two sentences. <laughs> but, but people do appreciate it. I, I do get a lot of you know nice positive comments that people like. I like how it's just simple. It, it's to the point. It's not flashy. You know, and... and and you're not trying to hype up anything, you know, it's, it's yeah. honest, and, and that's really what it is, because I'm using the products, you're seeing me work on the vehicles, and it's real yeah. world. Yes, you know? exactly. It's not like... And that's how you portray to your audience, that's what it seems yeah. like, watching your videos, and when I was there, uh, I think that's what people get a connection with you also in the videos and watching and learning from you, because yeah. you get that connection on, uh, okay, that's the real thing, that's the real yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that's why I started to do it too, is mm-hmm. I, I designed the channel or the videos to be for my customers uh, so they can see the work being done. Yeah. Like it's actually us doing the work. Yeah. And, and that, I think that builds confidence in the customer. Mm-hmm. And, and really it's for them, they have the upper hand because it's like they're meeting you before you know who they are. Yeah. So when they book... The appointment, or they talk to you, you. They hear my voice. They see me. Really smart, yeah. And they're like, "That's the same dude that was doing yeah. that detail. Like it's actually him." Mm-hmm. And I've had quite a few customers recently, with, within the past year. You know, the, the the channel has gained a little bit of attention, and within the past year, I've been having customers say they chose us because of the video because they like. That it's they saw me. the person there. They see, oh, he's coming to do my car. That's the yeah. person I saw. They build more of the trust, I believe. The trust. That, uh-huh. That's exactly the word. Confidence and trust. Yeah. And, and that's great. I had one recently that I didn't even meet the guy yet. I just briefly talked to him on the phone. And he booked uh, a ceramic coating job, a new car prep, a, a big job where he wants wheels off, everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm super excited about that. Um, and, he, and I sent him some links to the videos um, that I did a wheels off detail. Right. And he's like, thank you for that. He's like... It's hard to find detailers yeah. um, that are honest and, and forthcoming and, and to know who you're dealing with too. Yeah. And, uh, and he's like, thank you for that. He's like, I, I trust you working on my vehicle. And, and that, that, that is so true. It's one of the things, like the industry out there, it's, it's taken a, a way that I, I think it, it's improving now. And that's why I wanted to get together with you and we, we chat back and forth because... A lot of detailers out there, you know, if there doesn't, a, a lot don't do a quality job, yeah. you know, in this industry. I guess it's in, there's a lot of industries too, like real estate agents as well, where there are a lot, a lot of like part-time agents. And they can kind of uh, diminish the value of, you know, calling someone to do mobile detailing because there are not many people like us. And that's what I admire about you, you know, it's like we share our thoughts, you know, improvements, uh, even clients sometimes, definitely, which is oh, yeah. pretty awesome. So we keeping it's important to not only the market but us, you know, to keep the quality of detailing. Yeah. And you brought something forward to acquiring that trust too, which is I find it important. And we do it different ways, and that's what I want to get mm-hmm. from you because you run a. When I say different style of business, is you're more there with the client. You're the face of your business more, where us at Wings Mobile Detailing and myself, like we. 
uh, we, we, we have our guys doing the cars and that can t uh, consequently can break a little bit of that trust when we're uh, going over there mm. but we have to rebuild doing different ways like uh, for us I see it this way no matter whatever business how much you grow you always have to focus okay uh, looking at a client as one person and f the way we do it is in the practical way is follow up with every client that nice. we do say hi how you doing and and getting that connection I think it's really important yeah. and and you're doing a different style of business right yeah yeah, yeah. which you're like showing the video and they already oh you know he's doing my car which is pretty awesome yeah yeah and and you know i i want to commend you too I, I listened to one of the other podcasts um i forget if it was you and jimbo or if it was one of your podcasts uh that that you were talking about building that that relationship with clients is is so important um and and I, th I think that's that it really is kind of the, the base of this service type of business. Yeah, we're doing detailing, but I mean, it's like the percentage of detailing to the customer service is, I think, lower. You know, you're, you're doing the work and everything, but yes. the, the customers want to, they want to know you, they want to see you too. And yeah. I think we want to view the customers as an individual, right? Mm -hmm. You know, as a person, and we get to know them and and kind of become friends with them a little bit. That's that's good to have that working relationship. But they also want that from us, you know, that they want to see the same person weekly, monthly, yearly, or whatever. Yeah. And they want to build that trust. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and that's important uh, as well. Oh, that's what I remember now. Um, you were talking about training your guys, your, your team. Yes. And... And you said you have like a series of videos that you made yourself exactly. showing them yeah. like what to do. Yes. That was awesome. I was very impressed with that. I think that was really cool. If, if ever I grow to that point where I need to hire somebody, yes. so it's, I'll it's have them be like, okay, look at this video. Yeah. <laughs> this is how you do it. And that's how you get like um, consistency across the board uh -huh. yeah. you know, with that's your employees. True. It's that I think going to a different style of business uh, and let's say more in a growing perspective you know like more of a i don't like to say quantity because we as detailers we don't want to focus on quantity mm -hmm. you know qu I, I see that quantity things more than more of a car wash place yeah. you know yep. like oh we focus on the qu uh, quantity yep. but the growth itself uh it is run differently and that's how yeah that's how i used to automate i think it's uh it, it helps to do those those videos yeah yeah definitely um and I think of the same thing. Quantity for me is not exactly good. You know, it's, it's just me and my wife working. And detailing is hard. You know it. Detailing is rough yeah. on, like, your body and being out in the, the elements. And it's, it's hard work. So when it's just me it and my wife. It doesn't compare much to a car wash, though, right? When you're there uh, detailing. The yeah, car, I mean, actually just washing and doing the quantity. The detailing... You're, you're there in the in the heat that's what i tell my guys yeah uh hey it's not like a car wash you're going crazy you're nowhere near construction with jobs like that yeah uh it's more chill because we're taking two and a half three hours in each car so we're there taking our times and Take seeing the, time. the difference as we do it yeah that and that, nice. that's what also i love about this industry uh and i wanted to hear from you like what you love about it yeah uh but being out there uh in the sun sometimes it can it can be really hot. Like this morning, I used a foam gun, so I was having fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It, it was actually nice uh, this morning. The past couple of days uh, have been nice. But yeah, the, this a uh, couple of weeks ago that the sun was brutal. And yeah. And but yeah, when it's when it's all you working, it's it's all you, you know, and, and mm -hmm. that's it. Um, and, and I think of the pros and cons of, of our businesses. You know, you have a, a nice team of guys and I don't know if you have any girls working with you, but guys or gals working with you. No. <laughs> but um, e either way, you know, a good team of, of people working with you. And it's nice that you have uh, the ability to spread that work out. Yeah. You know, take your time. Uh -huh. You can spread that work out. Um, and for, for us, I, I try to spread the work out too. I, I actually don't work Monday to Friday every single day. Okay. And and I do that on, you know, on on purpose because I've done that. I've worked a full work week and it's great. The, the money is great and everything, you know, yeah. working every single day. But man, by the end of the week we're we're dead, we're shot. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. and it's rough. It, it is rough. Yeah. Um is. and and really we're only doing two details a day. 
you know, two full details for us, like one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. They can take up to three to four hours each. Um, but yeah, if we do that every single day, it's it's rough. So I really try to only schedule three days a week. Yeah. And then the other two, I leave as floaters uh -huh. where I can work around. It allows me to have some flexibility to reschedule things if I need to and, and move stuff around where if I book a full week or two weeks solid, I have no flexibility. Um, mm -hmm. So, but, the, but then I think of your business, you know, where you have your team of guys and it's nice. I've referred customers to you and you're able to get you them did. pretty quick. Yeah. And that's what they love. Uh -huh. and, and some I just can't handle that. I can't do like last minute. That's that's stuff. a good point. I think there's that difference also, and I, there's some people who call uh, call in and they want it. Some people call in one the same day. I mean, that's yeah, something I can't I go that far. <laughs> yeah, I have a few. I do that. It, right? Yeah, yeah. special on Saturdays. Yep. You know, I had and one we, this morning actually. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, I can't do it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's almost every Saturday we get yeah. people. Hey, I want to do the same day. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what differs a little bit from, let's say, a car wash place because uh, unless we grow a business in a style that we really have uh, the the manpower to get less minutes in, hmm. but as a mobile detailing, you know, we scheduling two or three days in advance. That's more of um, realistic in mm -hmm. our uh, business style. Mm -hmm. And but that's it. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> like, yeah, no, you send, I, I think you send those great. over to me. I think the last was I forgot his name, but you uh, he said he spoke to you. I was like, yeah, man, I want it for three days from now. I was like, I happened to have it available, which was nice. awesome. Uh, and then I sent I sent the guys there, mm -hmm. but and. We know there's a lot of uh, normally people who listens to this is more towards business and automotive detailing. So car fanatics, there mm -hmm. are car fanatics guys uh, guys out there uh, trying to build that audience too. You know, yeah. Uh, what what made you and why would you say to anybody like what made you want to why detail like if you're starting your uh, your business. Uh, why car detailing? Did you did you love cars at first or not necessarily? Well, you know, now that I think back on it, like when I was a teenager and I got my first car, I did detail it. Like I was into door jams and everything. And at the time, I didn't I didn't know what detailing was. I didn't know you could do that for a living. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just didn't. I, I I grew up in the city in Boston, but I but then like when I was like 12 years old, I moved to Vermont. Like big difference. I was a city boy, and then all of a sudden I'm like a country boy. <laughs> Okay, and, yeah. and a huge drastic change and growing up in the country for the rest of my you know teenage life and into my 20s did you um, start detailing there the countries no no okay no like that that's like that's not even a thing in vermont oh up okay. in vermont like people don't care about their cars uh, they, they rust mainly have out, trucks they, <laughs> yeah they have trucks and they rust mm -hmm. they build like wooden frames on their trucks and like they don't detail mm -hmm. um but uh, but i did it myself just because i love to have a nice clean car inside and out um but when I was up there, you know, I, I got married and I kind of got into bumper painting. It was a, my wife's uh, friends who had a, a mobile bumper painting business. Yeah. And that was the first time I heard of that. It was such a cool concept. Uh -huh. They would go to dealerships. They would get their um, used car lots and, and used cars that had maybe bumpers with scratches and dents and cracks and stuff like that. And their trailer had a mobile paint shop in it essentially is what it was. So they would go on site, they would take the car, they would just tape off the, the bumper section and they would repair the bumper, uh, base coat it, clear coat it, like with automotive paint and clear coat, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it would look like brand new again. They would drive it back into the lot and they got a new bumper. Uh -huh. And that business was awesome. So I actually did that for two years. And uh, then we decided to move down here, basically for the weather, you know, better weather and, and better economy. And uh, I was going to start that business because I was already getting into, into cars. Right. Like into so the, you're already in it. You already worked at it. So you were like, just want to be my. Did you, did you start wanting to be your own boss or yeah. mainly towards the passion of the cars itself that you decided to do it? A, a little bit of both, but, but mainly I did want to have my own business. Okay. I, I'm, I'm kind of like a control freak like that. Like uh, I wanted to manage things and, and have, you know, control over things myself. I'm the same way. Sometimes, I, sometimes that's my problem of giving away control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I want to talk about that in a minute too. Uh -huh. and I want to ask you some questions about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that was kind of a thing I wanted to do because, because up in Vermont, the economy was so bad and we were, I was job hunting and hopping. Oh, you was that. 
I think that was 2000. Don't say 2008. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. But it went up to 2008. Yeah, well, you know, 2009 2008. is when we moved down here. Like 2008 was like the last straw. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Like I, I lost my job in the middle of winter while we owned a house. Like it was yeah. rock bottom for me. And then that was when like, no, we got to make a change. Mm -hmm. uh, but we moved down here with pretty much nothing. We sold the house that we had up there, sold everything we had, moved down here with like two vehicles of our stuff and just started from scratch. And we were going to do the mobile bumper painting business, but the startup cost after doing some research was too much. It, w it would have cost like 30 or 50 grand oh. just to start up, you know, to get all the equipment. Uh -huh. And that's not even really um, tr even getting the work yet. You know, I would have right. to go out and hunt for it uh -huh. myself and go to dealerships and to, talk. Just and to pay that. the fee to start the business. Yeah, just to do mm -hmm. that. So yeah. in the midst of that, you know, it was a little bummer, but I'm like, okay, it, you know, let's let's think of something else. And I stumbled across detailing as I'm doing research on like uh, polishers and stuff because I was into doing scratch removal too and wet sanding a little yeah. bit. And I stumbled across the detailing aspect and I started seeing cleaning chemicals and polishes and waxes. And I'm like, what's this? Yeah. And the more research I did, I was getting excited. Like, what is this business? And then I stumbled across like autogeek.net and all the detailing forums. Mm -hmm. And that's when it clicked. I'm like, detailing? I never thought of that. Yeah. So my wife and I were just like, let's, let's do that. Yeah. And just jump into it. And, and that's what we did. We That's when you were thinking maybe, well, can I make a living out of detailing? You, you were still yeah. having all those doubts at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, the first year was yeah. terrible. <laughs> really? It was terrible. Yeah. I was begging people to wash their cars and vacuum them for That's like how it bucks. is, right? And that, that's, that's what I see with, I mean, I, I take it that with every business where they sometimes want start, I, I think that's a little bit of a problem too. When they start a business, thinking, oh, you know, people are making money out of this business, so let me start this business, which is not the reality. I mean, mm -hmm. we see uh, a business that was started by just selling books, and they can, can I make money out of selling books? Guy created Amazon afterwards, but yeah. <laughs> but with every business, there always comes those the doubts, you know, at the beginning, yeah. and there's what i what i see what i found it funny uh because i've seen other guys starting their own business not necessarily in detailing whatever it is and they always come it comes to the same steps of doubts like they first started to doubt oh is this the right industry does people want it and and then at a certain point they start to doubting their prices am i yeah. charging too much yeah it's it's interesting how it's not the business to blame it's not like oh you know the money's in the business it's that you starting, you wanting to do it. You already, for whatever reason, wanted to start, but you want to, you know, you're you want to be your own boss and get the control, and then you start, and then you start having that passion for the detailing. Yeah, which I think it's important that that comes first. Yeah, the passion comes second, so that you're not, you don't just, because I think that your passion too, can kind of delay the growth if you just like love doing that itself. Yeah. And you expand in a different way. You're going on YouTube and uh, showing people how to do it. So it's, yeah. uh, you're not just there. So we were expanding more in that way. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And, and, and the passion is there too. You know, when I first started doing yeah. research for detailing and I was getting excited for it because it was all new to me and I, and I liked cars and I always kept, you know, good care of my cars when I was younger. Um, but this opened up a whole new world that I didn't even know about. Uh -huh. And man, I wish I started when I was younger. I really did, you know. Yeah. I could I could have started it years ago if I knew about it. Um, but later in life is when I stumbled across it. Yeah. But yeah, it, it grew and grew and I got more excited. I'm like, what is this detailing world? And the more I got into it, it just, it, it was really exciting for me. And, and you know, and, and it's still exciting, even though now yeah. it's, it's shifted a little bit different. You know, as a business owner, you do get caught up in different aspects of your business mm -hmm. to make sure that it's stable and it, and it stays growing. Um, but the passion is still there. And, and the videos have actually kind of reignited it yeah. because I kind of go back to basics and showing people how to do certain things. Um, and, and, and it's ignited that, that excitement for yeah. detailing again. Yeah. Um, and, and also exciting other people, you know, get, getting them motivated and, and teaching them is also really uh, exciting. You do know? you find it important going back to basics, actually, like you mentioned, you know, it's it's nice that I'm watching the videos or making the videos and I'm explaining the basics, which is w w like 
what you always did, you know, the starting of the business. Mm. Do you find that important to refresh yourself, refresh your mind of the beginning steps or getting yourself, you continue being used to that without getting too away from the basics? Yeah, yeah, you know what? Um, that I think that is important. I'll, I'll actually go back onto the forums, mm -hmm. the, the detail forums, where I really learned a lot of stuff and asked a lot of questions. And I'll research simple things like, what's the best wax? Yeah. Just something simple, just to see what others are saying and, mm -hmm. and what they found. Um, and you find a lot of the times that people go back to certain products that have just stand, you know, stood the test of time. Yeah. Um, just thinking of one like the, the Colonite 845. Uh -huh. I mean, that wax has been around forever. Yeah. And there's all sorts Believe of Believe it or not, stuff. I never knew about it. Really? It's since oh, the past man. year yeah. that I, I realized, I mean, I, I heard the name Colonite wax. Yeah. It's one of those like old school waxes. Definitely. We started using an every car. Yeah. <laughs> We're using it on every and, car. And it's awesome stuff. And yeah. That's another, it's a trap for some detailing, for the detailing industry is the new products. They're exciting. There's all sorts of new products There's coming out. There's a lot out, of hype too, but in it's a, a way. But a lot of it is hype. They're, they're usually just the same yeah. type of product and they're saying it's yeah. new, it's improved, it does this or that. I'm like, yeah. Colonite does the same thing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, it's all, it's either, or a, a, a Carnauba, they, lab, they label it different, but it's nothing more than a Carnauba wax. <laughs> yeah, maybe more percentages here and there, but yeah. really it's negligible. It's like so minimal that it doesn't make that much of a difference to any average car detailer or average do-it-yourself mm -hmm. yeah. you know, guy who's, who's working. I actually made a podcast on, um, on that, you know, auto detailing products, hype of auto detailing products. What is hype really is not? Yeah, yeah. And how we that. perceive that. Oh, did you? Yep, yep. I didn't, li I didn't finish the whole thing yet, but uh -huh. I, I started listening to it. Yeah, so I actually made That's on good. that. And I was like, I was really thinking about it because there are also some products that it's, it seems like it's a hype because you're seeing the, the ads every time, but sometimes, sometimes it actually does work. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, oh, that's definitely true. But other times it's just the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. It's just to catch people's attention. And, and going back to uh, when I brought forward the, to, to the basics, you know, uh, the basic, I, I asked you because I really found it important because uh, I was getting caught about a year ago and leaving away the basics of the business. And that has was taken the negative consequences towards the business itself. What I mean by that is, let's say, focusing more on the outside aspect of the business business itself and leaving a little bit the, the what I call the front line, which is actually doing the service itself. Mm -hmm. And that's where the money is being generated. Yeah. So I always find for, what, and I had a, a friends before with, you know, business owners as well. And they asked me, you know, oh, why, why am I kind of losing control of, you know, my guys, they're not doing it quite well over there. What's going on? And then consequently always come to the money part where it starts mm. to decrease in any business, I believe. Yeah. And I was like, what's your front line? Are you there? Hmm, I delegated that part, but not, you know, in the right time. That's interesting. I'm delegating it. I, I mean, I'm all forward, like leaving the front line, you know, like you, you do something that's what's important. But even when you're sure that, okay, I delegated that part to somebody else I can trust, mm -hmm. you still got to, because it, it, that's the most important part of the business. Yeah. So I wouldn't 100% delegate that. That's what, that, that's like one of the mistakes that I've going through, which was really interesting when he said, you know, come back to the bit. That's why I was asking you, I want to see your take on, I want to learn from it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think, yeah. I think that is important. I have to be careful too, not to get carried away with the back end of the business, advertising paperwork, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, because you, you're right, when, when it comes to a job and, and the customer calls you, it is, it's basic. You're, you're yeah. dealing with the customer, uh, it's customer service, you know, learning how to, how to talk to them uh, properly to make them feel comfortable, explaining things yeah. in a simple way, and then going there and doing the work, and then making sure they're happy, follow up. That's where the money is, is made. Yes. That, that's when you exchange dollars yeah. <laughs> and, and you make the sure the customer The first contact happy. that we presented, being there, and the follow up with the client to yeah. keep the client, which for me is also really important. That's really good. That is really good. Mm. So, so I was going to ask you too about um, how you delegate. You know, how do you shift that transfer that trust? You know, to a person that you're delegating. Uh -huh. 
I mean, how do you feel about about that? Like when you delegate certain things and you kind of like let go a little bit, like yeah. how how do you do that and how do you feel about that? A, a lot a lot of it when I know I'm ready is uh, uh, I kind of follow my gut feeling to where okay either this person's ready. Uh, obviously, it's not completely through the training videos that we have, you know, f- to make the person ready. It's ninety percent is my gut feeling. Okay, uh, I'm leaving this part. And obviously, I learned it the hard way, uh, especially in the auto detailing industry when the front line is out there. I learned the hard way uh, when I told you I left the basics, mm. and I was like, okay. But then I adjusted, which which you you know it, it could have been catastrophic if I haven't adjusted. Um, so there, I think there's a fine line, there's a fine point of when you can actually delegate that part to somebody. Uh, my guy in Virginia Beach, for example, uh, he's got guys over there, and he's in his mind, he's thinking, okay, I have, I can use my time to find clients to promote the business, do all this important stuff, because right now my time takes more, it's more valuable doing these things than to be out here. Hmm. but that can be a huge mistake I think of if he was to leave the front line now because he's not ready uh, yeah. and he thinks he's ready obviously his time would be really well it would be really important over there but he's got to really make sure you know he's not leaving the front line and not replacing with somebody else but uh, the question I think for to delegate and leave it to somebody the point that I see me personally when it was ready is when, you know, I was, I was training people for that particular part, and now you know, doing every day with there with the with whomever it is, you know, I have a guy that helps me to train, and the other one to uh, kind of look around events. I haven't left a hundred percent, but training those guys in the right way uh, each day, and I was like, I was seeing, okay, I, now I can start to trust that person too to do this and then i left it was like you know easy oh, easy transition if you know it's ready you know it's getting to that point you act, you will know yeah i guess yeah that that is good though i, I guess that would be that would be the scary part for me <laughs> is is delegating because mm-hmm. like my wife and i have a very certain set way of doing things um and, and of course you know we're, we're we're fluid when it comes to different vehicles there's certain little tricks of the trades and, and mm-hmm. things that we're like oh how do we tackle that and then we figure it out but like trying to leave that up to um, yeah. an, an employee is like, oh, man, how, I got to make the sure they can. That's the line between self-employment, right? Yeah. Uh, what they, I think, what they say, self-employment and growing. Uh, I don't know what you call it because they're both businesses. Mm-hmm. But that fine line of leaving that self-employment part. Yeah. Which for me, it's it's not going to change. You no, know? I think it's in the. Uh, do I want to? cross this line or do I not want it's not like a line to cross it's I think a path you know I want yeah. it on this path or on this path because both works yeah that's yeah, what that's I good. believe you know if uh, it's just like business world and corporate world some people are made for you know yeah. to, to a corporate I'm not I can't yeah me neither right yep. and it's not the right or wrong but I think a lot of uh, people need to I, I think you know understand the, you know when they're taking one path if they really want that. And for me, is that's when I say the passion for the business of auto detailing itself. You know, it's... If, if one guy has a passion, I just love detailing cars. For me, it would make more sense to see it, okay, you know, you know, keep detailing cars and... Uh, or other guys just want... For me, what it was that I decided that I want to take this path of more uh, expanding towards delegating it is because I wanted always to grow a style of business that was mobile. I want to manage it. Mm. So yeah. that was, I still love, for, I still loved, fortunately, I got to love detailing. Um, not to be completely biased, but, you know, detail, it's pretty awesome. You know, yeah. we're out there oh, seeing yeah. the difference, uh, c- happy customers. Yep. So everything about the business is happy. You know, they like to detail cars. The customers are coming back with happy. It's not like uh, a mechanic shop where, a client is coming in with that he has to pay that extra expense for something he wasn't expecting. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I g- kind of gravitated myself to a way a bit from the conversation. <laughs> no, no, but that that's, but that's uh, that, that uh, yeah. makes sense though because this yeah. this type of business, the detailing, is like uh, 
like a luxury business or a pampering business. It's yeah. I, I called it an auto spa because you know when, when someone goes to the spa, they want to relax, mm-hmm. they want to be pampered, and yeah. they also want to see a transition with themselves. You know, whatever yeah. it is, if it's a hair salon, nails, whatever, they want to look good, they want to feel good, and I mean, it's such a nice feeling when you clean a disgusting car, mm-hmm. and even when you at the end of it all. You yourself, after you've cleaned it, you spent all these hours cleaning it, and it's hard work and everything. But then you get back inside that same car, and you just look around, and you, like, you feel yeah. the difference in the vehicle. Yeah. Imagine how the customer is going to feel yeah. when they know that their car was gross, yeah. and then they sit in it, and they're like, "Ah, oh, they, they, that's, they nice. s- that's I think it, it's nice to see that on their face when they see the difference. Their money's worth, yeah." Uh, and they see the difference. Okay, this is not a car wash. You know, that's when they see Because a lot of people, too, uh, they're like, oh, I'm not spending that money to detail my car when I can go to a car wash. Mm-hmm. Until they see it, they see the difference. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. There's, there's no comparison. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. There, there is no comparison. Yeah. I've had a few people, you know, they, they balk at the price a little bit. And they're like, I can just bring it to, you know, so-and-so car uh-huh. wash. I'm like... <laughs> then please do. <laughs> that's, that's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm okay with that because maybe that's not what you're not looking for a detail. Yeah. You're just yeah. looking just a quick clean up, you know, and yeah. a few dollars and that's it. But those who appreciate it uh, and, and they want to see a big difference and mm-hmm. that's that's the customer you want. That's the person yeah. you want. And I, and I get a lot of customers who they're the same way, you know, let me go to a car wash. They do go to a car wash and then they come back. <laughs> to it. All right, so this was uh, it was nice talking to you, Philip. Yeah, it was yeah, pretty awesome. Man. We got uh, we got to go over quite a few things here. Um, yeah, the dif- especially the difference between the style of both businesses as mm-hmm. well, yours and uh, and mine, and we'll keep working together out there and provide sure the will. best service ever. <laughs> sure will, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely love to do some more collaborations. Yeah, it's 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 nice to see all those you know the difference not only the cars before and after the products that we use and so that's why i want to also have everybody you know check out the youtube channel it's uh, miranda miranda detailing yep so if you just type in miranda detailing on youtube uh, you can subscribe to the channel and we have we have over 200 videos on there all sorts of stuff from yeah. interior work exterior paint corrections coatings how to's reviews on products um, always, always trying to do you know a nice variety of videos yeah. uh, on there for, for everybody to enjoy. Some short ones, some long ones. Uh, so there's there's a little bit of everything for everyone. That's awesome. So. And I'll put the link in the description when I put, uh, put this podcast up. Perfect. So they can click and go straight there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I look forward to to editing the video that we did together because there's some really good information about new car preps. Oh, um, yeah. What customers can expect, you know, yeah. what, what different products are out there. So that video kind of has a, uh, a, a compilation of stuff from, you know, us talking about the exterior coatings yeah. and what to expect, interior mm-hmm. work as well, uh, using a couple of different products from Dr. Beasley's, which is really Yeah, uh, that product is use. pretty awesome, yeah. Yeah, that coating mm-hmm. that we used uh, was pretty cool to... It, did you he know, like to play it? around with? The oh, customer yeah. like he oh, loved yeah. it. Our, our friends, it was friends of ours that we did kind of a pro bono job for, uh-huh. and they love it. It's, That's fantastic. And then I saw it in the sun the next day. Oh, and it looked amazing okay. Amazing because it has. And a it was little a black color too. Black with a little bit of like pearl in it. Uh huh. Beautiful, beautiful color. It looks so nice in the sun. So yeah. I'll so, be editing that video and uh, hopefully get that out probably in about a month uh, from now. But, uh, but I'll definitely right. let you know and send you the link. Awesome, man. So Miranda, all this spot on YouTube. If you guys want to check out all these cool detailing videos, satisfying detailing videos, uh, it's all there. I might throw my golden nugget here. Uh, for anybody also looking into getting to the detailing business, uh, you can uh, obviously check out our stuff there, Wings Mobile Detailing, and we can help anybody get into this business. Um, and obviously it's selected, but uh, send us a... Click on the link on the website there for Wings Mobile Detailing and definitely check out the those satisfying detailing videos that Miranda Miranda Detailing on YouTube. Alright, thank you guys. Thank you, man. Alright, thank you, Andrew. Appreciate Take it. Take care.